Hey guys, it's Coach Sane here, and in this video we're going to be introducing programming and what exactly it is. So programming is simply a set of instructions that we're going to deliver to a robot to make it do something. That's all it is in a nutshell. Now it gets a little bit more complicated than that as you can imagine, because we're going to be using something called Python, which is a programming language to tell the robot those instructions. Now programming is something that's actually quite widespread in day to day life but we really can't see it because it's behind a computer screen or a chip like a CPU. So you've probably witnessed programming when you go to hit an elevator and you hit the down button and it's a sequential set of instructions. So if you're on the fourth level, it will go to the fifth level before the fourth if someone hits it there. So there's programming to tell it to go to the fifth level and then the fourth level. That's the set of instructions that you're seeing. Also, this video, which is here on YouTube, if you were to type up an instruction into the search engine, there would be a programming um, code that would filter out various search results. So the search engine itself actually has a lot of programming behind it. Now, those examples of programming are quite uh, complex. And luckily, in our robotics sphere, we're not going to be doing that level of programming. Our programming will be quite simple. It's just going to be telling the robot to do certain amounts of things. So we'll go over motors, we'll go over sensors, We'll go over flow control as well as some other things like defining functions and variables. So without further ado, let's go over to the computer and see what MicroPython looks like on the computer. Okay, so this is my home screen and basically I'm just going to open up an app called Visual Studio Code. So it's this one here and I'll open that. Now Visual Studio Code is basically the app that we're going to use to program the robot in MicroPython. Now I'm going to assume that you guys already have done the various things that you need to do to get this installed. So some of those things are downloading the Visual Studio Code app as well as downloading and installing the Mindstorms extension. So if you haven't done those, I'll drop a link below and the LEGO Education site actually has very well defined tutorials that will help you guide you through those. So once you have those set and done, this is what the welcome screen of Visual Studio Code will look like right here. So basically how MicroPython works is we're going to create a project and in that project we'll have code written up in it. It's as simple as that. And that project will be in a folder and you have to make sure you don't delete that folder and the project inside it. So I'll go ahead and create a project and just write up a name for your project. I'm just going to call mine demo since this is a demo or a demonstration. And make sure you save it somewhere that you can easily retrace it. So I'm just going to put this on my desktop. and it'll take a few seconds to load, but then all of a sudden we now have this sidebar here, okay? So um, all we've done is we've created a project. It might look like we haven't done too much, but we've actually started our programming already. Now, before I go any further, there's one more thing we have to do before we can start programming, and that's going back to the MicroPython extension here, and we're just going to open up the user guide. Now. We've created a project. You can also explore example projects, which is here. And there's a bunch of projects that you can use. They're already predefined. However, we won't really be doing that because we're going to be creating custom programs for our own robot. So the other thing you can do is open up this user guide. Now, once we hit that user guide button, it's going to open up your default browser. And this is going to come up. Now, this user guide, or I'm going to refer to it as a documentation, is essentially going to be the bread and butter of our MicroPython programming. So anytime you need a uh, set of instructions or you forget how to call on a set of instructions, this is what we're going to be using. And it's very complete. So everything you need to know will be in this documentation. However, the thing about this documentation is it's quite large and cumbersome. You know, there's so much going on in here. So we're just going to be, be covering the bare essentials that we'll need to actually get our robot moving. Um, and then we'll sort of go into the deeper advanced levels of programming uh, as the videos progress. So this documentation, I'm going to be referring to it quite extensively. Uh, and as you can see, you can read through this and go through it as you want. But most of what we're going to be doing will be here in this EV3 devices tab. And we're going to be learning how to control our motors and sensors. Now, let me go back to the Visual Studio Code app. And that was that. Okay. So we now can close this. And we had our demo file that we had. So if you create a file as we just did and you want to open it, just hit file and then hit open. And our file will be this one here. So this is the programming environment that we're actually going to be doing all of our work in. So before we dive into this middle part here, 
we will go over these tabs here. Now there are one, two, three, four, five, six of them, and luckily only three of them are important. So I'll quickly go over exactly what they do. So when we come over to this file tab here, you can see that you'll open various files. Now these two here, you can forget about them. You're not gonna be doing any work in them. The actual, uh, the essential part that you need of your program is this main.py, and you can see it's here as well. And this main.py is basically um, the extension we're going to use to create our Python programs. So dot .py stands for Python, just like if you were to create a Google document and it says D-O-C-X, that's Google Docs. Now we also have a few other ones that we can do. So we have a search tab here. Um, basically we're gonna be writing a lot of words and code. So if you write a wrong word that's consistently throughout your program, you can just search and replace it just like Microsoft Word. Then we have this source control tab here. Now we're not gonna be using this at all. So you can simply forget about it. We then have this download and run section. This is going to be very important. So whenever you wanna download your program and run it, this is where it's gonna be happening. We then have this extension tabs, and we already have our extensions downloaded. So as long as you have this Lego Mindstorms MicroPython tab, uh, as well as these few other tabs here, it's going to be fine, you're all good. And then lastly, we have our Lego Mindstorms tab, and there isn't too much going on here. If you wanna open up a file, you can do that. If you also wanna to go to your user guide or example projects, that's also available here. Okay, so once you do that, you can actually close this, and we can now get into this main part here. This is the editor. Now the editor is where we're going to be writing all of our programs. You're going to be spending a bunch of time here. So we'll quickly go over what's going on and why there's already some writing here. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is that these words here are in different colors, okay? So the green words here, these are what you call comments. Comments have no effect on the program. So the robot doesn't even recognize them. And you might be asking, okay, why are they there? And the reason they are is to tell us what they do. So for example, this comment here, this program requires Lego Mindstorms V 2.0 or higher. That's the creator of this program telling us that we need to get version 2.0 or higher. Now, these are just random comments, so we can just delete them, we can do anything with them, so I'll just delete that. And the main reason why you're going to be creating a comment is to remind yourself of what your program does. So, I'm starting off with comments because that's very important. Now, you might create a program and you might send it to me, you might send it to some of your friends. I'm not gonna know what's going on in that program unless you have some comments. So, to create a comment, it's just the hashtag and you can see it's already in green and then you can write a space and we'll just write a comment here. Now, if you wanna start creating a program, if you hit enter, it'll go down to the next line and then that'll just be white. So white text, that's just simple text. Anything that's going on, like if you create any math, if you have any of these sort of EV3 brick sound files, everything else is gonna be in white. Our last color is purple. Now, purple is different to white in the sense that purple words are special operators. So you can see how from, import, these are special operators. We'll learn future ones like while, we'll learn if, we'll learn else. These are all special words that we're going to use and they do different things to the white text. So you don't need to worry about those purple colors for now. We'll have a separate video for them and we'll go over those while, if, else in the future. So I'll go ahead and delete this. Now, something I want to bring your attention to is the numbers on the side. So I started off this video by telling you that programming is simply a set of instructions. So as you can see, it goes from one all the way to 16. And if we want to create more lines, we just hit enter. That's your set of instructions that you can see. So this line will process through the EV3 brick first, followed by the next and the next and so on and so forth. So that's why there are numbers on the side. Uh, I also want to go over this first eight lines here. So these lines were already preset and I don't want you guys to touch any of these lines, okay? So we will explain what they go over, but the reason why we're here is because if we don't have these lines, then we can't actually use EV3 MicroPython to tell the robot what to do. And the reason for that is because Python relies on something called libraries. So libraries are preset data that someone else has created that we can then use. So as you can see, uh, to import a library, you just say import and then you import this EV3 brick you can also import all of these different classes. Now, just to give you an idea of what classes are, if we go back to the user guide, and for example, we hit brick. So this class is called EV3 brick, and now we can use all of these functions under that class. We'll get to that a little bit later, but what I'm trying to tell you is do not touch these eight lines. It's absolutely essential for creating programs that run on the EV3 brick. Okay, so after that, we also have some already predetermined comments of the creator or Lego education telling us what to do. So 
we're going to go over this create your objects here. So the way Python works is you have to initialize your motors, your sensors and your EV3 bricks before you can actually use it. And the way we normally do that is we create a name called EV3 and then we let it equal and then we have this thing here called EV3 brick. So this EV3, that's what we said. You can call that EV4, you can call it EV5. It doesn't make much sense though. So we're just going to call it EV3 and that's what we're going to refer to our brick as. Now this function here or this class EV3 brick, where did that come from? Now, the reason why we use this EV3 brick is if you go back to your documentation, you can see if we want to use the EV3 brick, you have to import this class here. Luckily, it's already imported, and then we call that class EV3. So, we're going to call this EV3, and that creates an object. Now, an object is basically an initialized component. So, we can now use this EV3 brick and do certain things with it. Now, you might be asking, what things can we do with it? Well, you can turn the lights on, you can turn the lights off, you can use your speaker. And in fact, this program here already allows our speaker to be used. So this is a preset program that we've got. All it's going to do is let the EV3 brick and the microphone beep. That's this simple program right here. Now you can imagine if you want to use different components, you will then go to your classes and say, okay, I want to use a motor. Now your motors are in EV3 devices and the class is just motor followed by the port. Now we'll go into this in the future video, but let's say you want to turn your left wheel and it's connected to motor B. You will then write left wheel, which is what we're calling the object, and we'll let it equal. Now we have to basically write exactly what we have here. So this black writing here, that'll be exactly the same. It's also case sensitive. So motor, capital M, and then open bracket. And then you can see here, it says port, positive direction, blah, blah, blah. Now, the only thing that we're going to do is port. In fact, this positive direction in gears, you won't have to initialize those because we can just apply negative numbers and we can just put different powers to get those working. So the only thing that you really need to assign is the port. So you can't just write port A or port B. That's not the way it works. The port also be has to read it a very specific way. And to get that way, just click port. And as you can see here, this port in itself has a class. And let's just say our left wheel is connected to port B. To actually write our port, you have to do port as you saw the class, dot, followed by the port which you have it in. So I have mine in port B. And now that's all you need to do to initialize your motor. So I'll briefly go over that again. Let's say you want to use your large motor. So you have to use this motor class here. We have a capital M followed by OTOR, which is the motor. And that sets up the class. We then need to tell the EV3 uh, MicroPython which port we are actually using. And to do that, we'll go into this port tab here. And you can see the port actually has a class on its own. So put port again, capital P. And then once you want to assign the actual port, you have to put a dot followed by a B. So this is essential sort of syntax that you have to use and you have to understand. To uh, create a class or to create an object, that object will be equal to a class. And then if you want to assign a certain value, you will do dot followed by this gray, whichever one applies. And that's basically how EV3 MicroPython works and how you can tell it what to do. So essentially, all you're going to need to do is if you want to create your components, create them as objects and then call on those objects to do certain things. So there's quite a lot of things you can do with different components, which is why in the future videos, we're going to go over the specific things we'll need to create an FLL competition robot and program it in EV3 MicroPython. Okay, so now I'm going to show you guys how to connect your EV3 Mindstorms robot to your actual computer. Now to do this, you're going to need a special wire. This is simply a USB to micro USB-C wire. So all you need to do is collect the USB end to your computer and the micro USB end to your EV3 brick. Now we already have this in our core set kits, uh, as well as even if you have the 31313 kit, that will also be included. So you don't have to worry too much about getting this wire, you should already have it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to go back to the old program that they had and we're just going to let the EV3 speaker beep. So I've got my program ready. Now I just have to wait for the EV3 brick to initialize and get ready. As you can see, it's behind me. Now this orange flickering you can see here, it's basically the robot going ahead and initializing the MicroPython software. So it takes quite a while. It actually takes a couple of minutes. Whereas if you were to use just the normal Mindstorms brick by itself and use the scratch programming, it will take about 30 seconds to start up. But using Mindstorms and using EV3 MicroPython to program your EV3, it's gonna take a lot longer because our programs are going to be a little bit more advanced.
Okay, so as you can see, the AV3 MicroPython has booted up, and now we can just go ahead and connect the EV3 to our computer. So you're going to need to go up to this files tab right here, and then you need to go into EV3 dev device browser. And this is basically where you go to connect your EV3. So hit click here to connect to the EV, EV3, and your EV3 should come up if you've connected it via the wire. So we'll go ahead and hit that. And it should take a while. So if it's yellow, it means it's on standby, and now it's turned green, which means now it's connected and we can actually run a program. So I've gone back to the old program and I'm just going to run it for you guys. So the way you run a program, as we mentioned uh, earlier, is you go to this run tab and you basically hit this download run section here. So I'm going to run this program and I've put this here so maybe the mic can hear it and I'll go ahead and hit it. Okay, so that was the whole program running and all it was was the speaker beeped. And we did that by creating the object of the EV3. We then called on that object with this function, ev3.speaker.b, and that was it. Now, there's a few more things that we need to concern ourselves with, and that is this output tab here. So once we ran the program, we then have this debug console, terminal, output, and problems. Now, of these four, you only need to concern yourself with output. So a terminal, it's going to be a little bit messy. You don't need to worry about that. Debug console, the same. Once you actually start debugging, then you can get into it, but you don't need to worry about that for now. And problems, you shouldn't really have any uh, issues with this problems tab. So go to the output. Because our program worked, it should say completed successfully. Now let's say we had an issue with our program. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to create a mistake on purpose and see what happens. So I'm going to, I mean, let's just hit, instead of doing EV3, I'm going to put a capital E. Now the mistake here is that this needs to be the exact same as this. So putting a capital E, Python is case sensitive, so it's not gonna recognize that. So let's see what happens if I try to run this program right here. So I'll go ahead and hit download and run. And I won't even need to show you the brick because all that's gonna happen if you look at the computer is it's got right here, the output. So it says uh, right here, name error, name EV3 isn't defined because we actually define the EV3 brick as lowercase e. So that's where it picks up the error and it can even tell you the line. So line 15 is where the error is. Just go up to line 15 we know this was where the line was, so before it was like this, and we just need to correct that by putting this here. So just put an E, and it's as simple as that. So if you have errors, just download and run it with the wire in, then you can pick up those errors. Now let's say you want to download a program and then run it separately. All you need to do is go back to the file tab, and now just hit your EV3 dev, and then hit this download button here. Now what this is going to do is it's going to download your latest program, but it won't run it. The reason why you want to do this is because sometimes you want to run it on the map as opposed to just on the ground or wherever your laptop is. So hit that, it'll start, it'll say downloaded, then go to your wire and take it out. And then you can run your program wherever you want. So if you know your program works and it's sound, then you can run it just like that. If you want to check if you have problems with it, you can hit download and run, which will then tell you what's going on. So now you can see it's red because I've disconnected the robot, but that's about it. So that was the programming environment in a nutshell. In future videos, we're going to be going over what this programming environment does and how we can use it to program our motors, sensors, as well as do other things like flow control, create, define functions, and create variables. So this was the first video. If you need to rewatch this video, please do. There's a lot going on, especially this object and calling on that function name. That's very essential. In the future, we'll be showing more examples of that. So if that isn't 100% uh, supplemented in your brain, in future videos, we'll consolidate that knowledge with future examples and demonstrations. And that's about it. Thanks for watching.